Ladies and gentlemen, let's take a journey into the unknown. energy that surrounds us presents riding through the unknown with your host Michael Hoff. Welcome to another exciting episode of Riding Through the Unknown. I'm your host, Michael, and joined with me tonight on this really, I think it's going to be awesome and informative episode, is someone who I have seen her videos and is truly amazing at what she does. So without further ado, I give you Angie Dollar. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So I've seen you do readings on the Secret Space program and all kinds of information. But for those of that may be seeing you for the first time somehow, could you give a little bit of what your background is so that they can follow along? Um, gosh, my background, I wouldn't know really where to start. I mean, I started having psychic abilities in college. I was probably about 24, about to finish school, and I would have a dream, and the next day the dream would happen. It was very strange. Um, it, it would be a weird dream. Like, I dreamed one day that... Um, there was a woman with a beard and I woke up and like usually, you know, I would forget a dream, but I woke up and I thought, why am I dreaming about a woman with a beard? And then I'm walking down the college halls and there was a woman with a beard painted on like she's going to be in a play, you know? So it was that kind of thing where I would have a really weird dream and wake up and like, whoa, there it is. So um, I pushed it away for a while. I felt like this is evil. This is crazy. And um, so f go forward a few years, I, I moved to um, Texas and actually met a woman at church at a non-denominational, you know, Christian church. And she said, you know, that's a gift. And I thought, well, if a Christian thinks that I guess it's kind of okay, you know, I mean, I'm not religious, but I, maybe it's not evil. And then it just opens up. Like, I think sometimes when people accept it and believe like, hey, this is not crazy, then it, it really opened up. But um, I started in 
2015. You know, I just kind of shelved that for a while and became a teacher. But um, 2015, I gave up teaching, gave up the normal life and became a QHHT hypnosis practitioner, beyond quantum healing hypnosis, um, SRT energy clearing and remote viewing and just, I guess that's about it. <laughs> it's a variety of things. Wow, that, that's quite a jump to go from teaching to all mm -hmm. of that. And I'm kind of curious in your QHHT and SRT work, do you, have you come across any like near death experiences? Um, I really haven't. What what I've come across is I've seen some people online who just um, and what's the guy's name? Michael Newton or I can't remember the guy who who has the book about um, near death experiences. And then there are several channels that have people who have the near death experiences and they say, oh, it's so wonderful. And, you know, I wanted to come back. I was encouraged to come back for my family or I had unfinished things to do. And I thought, well, I want to journey and see if I can find like a, a soul trap, like a reincarnation trap or something like that because I wasn't seeing that online. I've heard people talk about it, but I wasn't seeing people actually say, I've gone there and I've seen it. So I got a friend of mine to help guide me as if she's hypnotizing me. I, I taught her how to do it, wrote the induction. I said, you just need to keep me awake, keep talking, or I'm just gonna go so deep, I'm just gonna be asleep. <laughs> I'm gonna be gone, you know? So um, I, I gave her some questions to ask me and I just, I just took off. Um, so what I did was I, I ended up following like three different stories doing those NDEs and, um, or they, they actually had died. Like two of the people had actually died. And then the third person was myself. I wanted to see, okay, where am I going to go after this life? So it was more like not a near-death experience where they were going to come back and be encouraged to come back. They were going to be re encouraged to reincarnate after they die. So um, the first lady, if you want to hear the stories, they were all really different, really different stories. Um, the first woman died in a car accident. She was 30-something, and um, she was real rebellious acting. She had a bunch of tattoos, and just she immediately was... Um, uh, entities walked up to her and tried to get her to like reincarnate and she just ignored them. She just kept moving forward. And then they brought in like her, either her family or her friends, <laughs> which is typical. This is the typical thing to get you to like reincarnate or if it's a near death experience, get you to go back down. And so again, she just ignored them. Like she was aware. And then she just kept walking and she pushed up through something and um, either during the session or after the session, my friend has, has read a lot. Like I just purposely didn't read anything about it except one book. I wanted it to like come to me as virgin ears and eyes. Like I, I don't know a lot about it. But uh, my friend said, yeah, I've heard about people. They push through something and they can look down because she was able to look down and see everything below her. It's like she had moved up to a higher vibration. And then she just decided to go off and, and just kind of float around a while. She was just not having anything to do with it. So, but, um, and then I ended up following a man and I didn't really know what was happening. I didn't know I was following him until I got to the end of it, but he actually went to like a hell. And um, they were pushing him to reincarnate and he was like, no, I don't wanna reincarnate. And then he ended up in a hell and I could feel like I was there and it's not fire and brimstone. It was just like, I was feeling more and more disconnected from myself, like less personality, less self, less, I guess, divine, like happy energy. Like what you would think of as like the God energy or just, you know, just connected to your soul, just feeling really good and happy. It was gone. It was like I was getting more and more numb and just feeling like lost, alone, and sad and depressed. I felt like I was just sinking down, down, down. And there was a point where I'm, I'm in this and I'm thinking, 
am I stuck here myself? Am I going to like not get out of this? It was a terrible feeling. And um, I just, so my friend who was guiding me, she said, you know, it's, can you get out? She was just like, what's going on? Can you get out? And I'm like, I don't know. And then I started to see a light come in and we were able to move out of it. But then again, they still were trying to get us to reincarnate or to go back. And um, so he kept pushing forward. And then the point where I realized I'm, I'm following the man. And then we get to the end where we like, we meet his high self, what some people call his high self or, you know, his divine self or his um, future self. And then it was all like, okay, this feels great. You know, we're free. And then my high self was there as well. And then we were able to look back on it and kind of figure it out. Like, oh, wow, you know, we're now we're at a place where we have a choice. Um, and then I looked at my own near-death experience during that. I'm like, well, I kind of like to see, like, where am I going to go after this? Like, we kind of think we're doing this kind of work, like you're doing disclosure. And there's those of us out in the community, like, we like to hope that we'd have some control and after this but I mean they were still trying to get me to reincarnate too I mean or, or come back it's it seemed like they were softer and nicer and saying oh we're your soul family we're so glad you're here you could go over here and incarnate and have this experience and I was like no I'm just gonna float around a while you know um, I think it's a point of it's kind of like well what do you do you know what do you do at the end of it and I thought maybe there's a thing of like I was thinking I want to just um, kind of figure things out maybe if I float around for a while and just give it a little thought because you're still aware then I'll I'll figure out what to do maybe soul fragments come back to you and, and pieces that are missing and more parts of your consciousness that are off somewhere else and you can think okay this is what I want to do next and even if I decide okay I'm gonna go ahead and reincarnate but I'm not making any agreements, no contracts or anything. I'm staying as long as I want to stay where I want to go. I'm not going back to crazy earth anymore, you know. So um, it was it was a really amazing, interesting experience. So I think most people have been, oh, yeah, I'll, incarn I'll reincarnate or I'll go back to my family because there's unfinished stuff and people are going to miss me. It's like, no, don't go back. <laughs> don't come back here. <laughs> Why would you come back here? You know, I ask myself that every day. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's like the line in the matrix. Why, why didn't I take the blue pill? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And we create these. I mean, some people say karma or your family, whatever. I mean, I've got a dog and a daughter. I mean, it's like, it's like, I'm a little bit like, I'd like to be here to, to help out with some stuff, but they may have to, my daughter may have to find her own way. She's an adult. And I'm like, I'm, I'm out of here, you know? <laughs> and, you know, I find it interesting, you know, you mentioned being, you know, you came to Texas that it's like, when I think about it, cause I'm in Texas myself going, why oh why are we here trying to do this because we are in the worst possible region to do this because this is the place where the people are the most anti what we're doing and it's because of religion and you know living in the bible belt it's like i mean you were fortunate to find someone who was open to it most people mm -hmm. find people are like like you were thinking the opposite going oh my gosh you know that's devil's work or right you, you, you got a <laughs> demon in you if you can do that it's like really <laughs> <laughs> i'm expecting my head to spin around and <laughs> you know yeah that, that cool. yeah that girl um actually got a degree in biblical studies or whatever so i think some of those people just really go deep into it and really think you know like yeah there were people being the witches being asked to come down from the hill and help and do magical stuff or whatever i mean there's all kinds of stories that people don't talk about about the psychics who were helping you know or the prophets and all that so right um yeah but 
I will say, though, too, your description of hell, I, I find most interesting because, like you were saying, you know, we're all taught to fire and brimstone, and yes, that sounds horrible, but the way you were describing it, being stripped of all your gifts and everything, I was like, man, that, that kind of makes the fire and brimstone like, hey, let's go vacation over there. <laughs> let's upgrade. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. At least you're feeling something maybe. <laughs> I mean, it was so, it was so numb. I was so much in this world of nothing, like separating more and more from myself and more and more from like, cause I, I can feel this happy, you know, divine energy sometimes when I'm playing with my dog or, you know, when the, the daughter is born or whatever, you know, there's this connection sometimes an average person can feel. And it's like, it was all cut off. I was just nothing. So. Yeah. And to me, that sounds like a fate worse than anything. And mm -hmm. that would truly be hell. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a strange feeling. And, and you know, when I see these things, like when I was remote viewing that, and when I'm doing like remote viewing for people, secret space people, super soldier, all that, it's like, I can't just make that stuff off, up off of my head. Cause I'm just like, boom, I'm there and it's coming in. You know, I'm not like a genius. You have to be a genius to just suddenly make up this stuff, you know? So I had never heard anybody say anything like that. It was a terrible, <laughs> terrible feeling. And I gotta imagine, because I, I don't have memories myself of everything yet, and I know they're coming, mm -hmm. but I can imagine from hearing how others have talked about going through the schism where they break the consciousness and separate the mm -hmm. two, you know, so I can imagine that. But I could not imagine remote viewing and watching that. That has got to leave a mark. No, you know what I do is that um, I was taught, I'm trying to think if it was in Dolores Cannon's class or not, but I was taught in, I think it was another hypnosis class. So maybe she talked about it, but I took her class first. I took clinical hypnosis in person here in Houston, and then I took um beyond quantum healing and then I took her QHHT with her so she was teaching it um, so somewhere along the line I think it was the first one where we tell people if they start to get upset they're experiencing something you tell them okay you can you can just be observing that you're not reliving it just imagine you're over there you're observing it off to the side and you'd be amazed at how someone can just flip and they're like okay you know I'm over here now <laughs> So, um, right. so I, I do that with myself where I'm like, I'm just, I'm just watching it. So I consider it remote viewing where I'm just watching it. I consider it more of an astral travel where I'm more involved in it. And, but I don't have to, I still don't have to feel the negative energy of it. You know, like I've gone deep enough where I'm like, I can be there. And I, I remember like petting a horse. And I'm like, wow, I can like feel the hair on the horse, you know? So I consider that more like I'm there and I'm, I'm in that body feeling it, but I'm not going to feel myself be murdered or something. You know, I'm going to back, I'm going to back away. So. Right. No, I'm just, I'm just picturing like, you know, thinking, seeing, you know, the process and everything going mm -hmm. in my mind, I'd be like, my personality would be i could only imagine what that would feel like and be feeling sick watching it mm -hmm. and that's what i was meaning by leaving a mark is like going you know how do you leave that and not be like going okay i i need to totally do a 180 go either ground or go to some happy place mm -hmm. because this is just white to me yeah, and there's a point of also asking for healing around it for yourself, you know. You want to be you want to be finished with it, um, get some healing, get some freedom, just um, release any contracts. Or some people think that they had they own our birth certificate. They like bought us at birth or before birth. And it's like, okay, we want to tear all that up and end it, bring in healing and replace it with some positive energy and just let go of it. 
Yeah, and I think that would be a gift because, yeah, I'm I'm like that's part of what I'm dreading too about learning. You know what I've gone through is because I know I mean everything was bad, but there were some areas that were worse and i'm like i don't want to be in one of those that was the worst <laughs> i'm like please no and then my luck i'll be like oh yeah you were one of the first and it'd be like that'd be my luck <laughs> mm -hmm. well but, sometimes even when we look at past lifetimes we're playing different roles so um maybe um if we just put aside the secret space stuff we might be in a lifetime where we've um We've harmed other people and then we switch roles and they harm us. So I, I think when I was, when I first started doing, first started doing the energy clearing work and looking at my own lifetimes, I started to realize that like sometimes I'm the bad guy, you know, too. So um, I just look at, all right, I'm asking for forgiveness and giving for forgiveness and then I'm trying to move on and create the best life I can here, you know. Right. Now, we've kind of skirted around this, but I, I think now is a good moment to kind of pause. And you, you mentioned QHHT, mm -hmm. and a lot of people may not be familiar with that. And I know it comes from Dolores Cannon. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, that's about all I know about it. So could you share with us a little bit about what QHHT is? Yeah, so it's quantum healing hypnosis. Um, she used to call it quantum healing hypnosis therapy, but some people don't like to say therapy, so they'll say technique because we're not, you know, licensed therapist. I think is the reason. But um, she spent, I think, over forty years perfecting it, trying to get to the deepest part of what she called the subconscious. Um, to go in, connect with it. We may we may call it the high self connect with it and that's the place where all the memories are stored of anything that's ever happened to us and then we can go in and, and look at it and ask for healing. So when someone comes to me for a session, I tweet the Beyond Quantum Healing the same way. So um, Candace Craw Goldman, who worked with Dolores Cannon, created that BQH. Um, Dolores Cannon thought you can't do this stuff online. Well, Candace said, yes, you can. I think Dolores was just old and she just wasn't a technology person. I mean, she couldn't even use a digital recorder. Her daughter had to help her set that up. Um, I think she just wasn't, you know, with the tech because I've had people have sessions online that are just as good or they're better because they're at home in the comfort of their, their bed or their couch, you know? Um, right. So what will happen is clients, I tell them, tell them to write an intention, you know, what is it you're wanting to get out of this? And I have them write, you know, a certain amount of questions, maybe 15 or so questions that we're going to ask their subconscious or their high self. And it's interesting. And, and we, then we do the interview. You know, we talk through the questions, talk through things in their life. And usually during that interview before the session is when the most important things come out that they haven't even written down, you know. So, uh then I just give them an induction. I'm sorry, there's a train at this Airbnb. I don't know if you hear. <laughs> Actually, I thought it was a wind, like the wind was blowing. It's, yeah, it's a train. Um, I like trains. My grandfather worked, worked on a train. Um, so I just give them the induction, take them to a trance. You're right where you are. Like if you're in the deepest state, you're right where you are. Like right before you go to sleep, that same kind of place. Um, Suzanne Spooner, who's really well known, who worked with Dolores Cannon, she says, we're more awake and aware now. We don't go to sleep and have like any amnesia type sessions where we forget everything anymore because we're ascending. Like we've ascended to a certain level where when we're put in tra trance, we can still open our eyes around. So, um, so people who are scared, they're going to be knocked out like I've given them a Mickey or a pill a drug or something. It's like, no, you can still open your eyes and look around, you know. It's nothing scary about it. Um, and then we just have to see where your subconscious or your high self takes you because people come in with an intention, but it's like you're 
your subconscious or your high self has a plan for you and then people are happy with what's shown to them and they may look at like one or two or three lifetimes or so just look at some like things that happen some big events and then we'll go to asking the questions that they had you know and then also ask for healing like at the end i always say is there anything else to know or to heal just to open the door like anything else so so i'm curious um with the qhht when you're engaging the subconscious have you ever encountered like what we call the hybrids where that's and if so what is that like does their conscious side kind of fight our subconscious side or do they work together oh when they when they have some of the et energy some of the et dna like that type right yes I may have to like grab my dog because it's loud in this Airbnb. Um, yeah, I have had I have had like that that ET side come into the sessions, and I've had them come into my sessions too. Let me see if I can just pick up my my dog real quick, if that's okay. Just a second. Oh, that's that's fine. Okay, whoops. Um, yeah, I've had them come in and, um, okay, the last time I had them come in, a lady went to see what they were telling her they were her family and they were reptilians. And they were telling her that they, they liked how she incarnated here because she, um, they were giving to connect to her emotions, connect to her human side, like she was bringing that back to them. And they wanted to have some of those emotions, some of those feelings. They wanted to know what that was like because they were disconnected from it. Um, I've also had them come into to my own sessions. And I, I thought, I remember and um, after the session, the lady said, well, you're, she was calling me an ET. Well, you're an ET, <laughs> you know? I didn't know what hybrids were or anything, but um, it just felt like, it, it felt like home. It felt familiar, so. So a big question on my mind is with, with everything that you can do and everything is, how did you get introduced to the secret space program and MK Ultra and all of that and make you want to go, yes, this is a niche I could get into and pursue? Well, it wasn't, it, I guess that a lot of times with this kind of work, we get into it because it has something to do with us, you know. Um, I was taking a class. Well, first I was tied up in the whole twin flame thing. That's a whole other story. And I found Eve, I'm going to say her name wrong, Evie Lorgan, Lorgan online and did a session with her and around that, just a hypnosis session. But then just back in February, it wasn't that long ago, February of this year, I went into a small group that she was running and we would meet every Friday. And you've got dogs on your end now. We're just I do. My dogs yep. tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Something just triggered the door alarm, and my little my little dog here. Oh. Um, uh, okay, she was doing a group, and it was just kind of like whatever you would want to, you know, talk about in the group of about five or six people and her, and um. A couple of people were talking about the secret space program or super soldiers. And I had no idea just back in February, I had no idea. And I became kind of obsessed because I needed to go to the dentist. And I thought, I didn't know why it was bothering me so much. I said, I am so scared. I have to go to the dentist. And, and well, Evie said, well, you know, if you're in the secret space program, you were probably tortured or electrocuted or, you know, all kinds of stuff. And then I was like, I was triggered even more. <laughs> I didn't know why I was triggered. And then I started having weird dreams where I'm fighting 
and um, names started coming to me in dreams, like names of certain presidents and certain people. And so my dreams switched during that club, during that little group. Um, I started to like wake up and connect to this kind of stuff that I had been in it. And then it just becomes a knowing. And so I went, I went again to my friend who helped me do like the NDEs or the between life. And I said, okay, I want to like, I want you to guide me and look at this secret space stuff or super soldier stuff. And it's like, I know a lot of people who do QHHT and beyond quantum healing because we'll like trade if we want to. And I thought, I don't trust anybody to do this without them being biased. They're going to think I'm crazy, you know? So I got my friend who wouldn't think I'm crazy because I guess her and I are both crazy. <laughs> and she said, yeah, sure, I'll guide you. So I just wrote up whatever questions I could think of. I didn't really know much of what to ask. I had just watched part of one person's story online. And again, I wanted it to be like my virgin ears and eyes, like this is my stuff. So I just thought, I watched a little bit of someone else's story and then I stopped. I thought, okay, I just want to go into it. And I did like four or five sessions with her just to get it rolling. And then after that, it's like memories are just flowing in, you know, at any time now, because like I've opened the door. But when I first went into trance with her, I immediately knew that I had been a cyborg soldier because I, I immediately felt te technology moving down my arm. Really? <laughs> and I knew what it was. I, I knew it was technology coming into my arm. I immediately felt technology coming into my, my eye and it was, it was pretty wild. And I saw myself fighting some um, spider beans that I've heard people talking about, but I saw myself fighting them and actually having a conversation with one after I was dead in that, at that moment. And he was dead. Like we had a conversation when we passed out of that circumstance and um, it just went from there. So, and after I had that first session, then I knew like what to ask for the next one. I knew like what I was looking for. And I just spiraled off into like a lot of different situations. So. No, that's a really um, cool way to do that. Yeah. I don't know if somebody would want to get into it if they weren't in it themselves. You know, like, why would you want to even be involved? This is a bunch of dark stuff, you know, so. Right. I, I got into it at first because I thought people had a right to know mm -hmm. this was going on around them and could be happening to somebody they know. And like you're saying, little did I know mm -hmm. that I was actually being driven by a self-awareness that I just wasn't aware that I had. And I'm also a little bit curious because it's something I've, I've been starting to question in myself is when we dream, you know, when we go to sleep, you know, we can astral travel a lot easier. Being in this programs now that I'm finding out that that's possible, now I start to go, am I astral traveling or am I remembering, you know, programming or have I never really astral traveled? It's all been programs and... So, yeah. So how do you differentiate? I think some people feel like they're done with the programs. Like I know that um, Tony Rodriguez, however, he says his last name. I, I think he Rodriguez. feels like he's done. Yeah, he did like 120 and back. He's done. And so if he was to dream, maybe he would just I would think he would be just going into a memory, you know. But um, I think there's a lot of people who are still in the programs. So when they dream, they're, they're probably being um, abducted, you know, they're being taken and they're, they're off, you know, for years, even though in their dreams, they might be off for an hour, you know. Right. So um, I know that some people say that we're, we're in clone bodies. Sometimes we're taken in our astral body. Sometimes we're taken in our physical body. Like James Rink and I have talked about, we'll, we'll get marks on our body. 
I had a woman that I did a remote view for the other day and I said, you know, I'm going down what's coming to me. And I said, I think maybe you have marks on your body too. I said, I'm not sure. I think maybe you do. And I just went past it. Like I'm trying to get a lot of information out. And then in her email back to me, she said, yeah, I have had marks on my body. She's just pinging like all these things saying, you're right about this. You're right about this. You're right about this and the marks on the body, you know? So, um, yeah, sometimes we're taken in the physical body as well. So, and, and they might be just, they might be done with us in the programs. Like maybe we're done, but they're still like monitoring, like an implant or they're just monitoring us in some way, you know? So I, I would like to be completely done, but I know I, I know I got abducted. Right. And, you know, it's true because, like, someone had said that, like, I, I think they were pointing out that, like, my programming's different. And it's like I broke the program. But at the same time, though, to me, I'm like, okay, so if it's broken, do I still get called and do I still, you know, they have access or because it's broken, am I completely free and able to do what I choose to do? And then what's even further though, is like, I have dream, let's say I, I dream where I'm taking on like the black goo and the AI Mm -hmm. Am I actually choosing to take that on or is somebody typed into like my program and said, hey, it's now mm -hmm. time for you to do this. And I'm thinking I'm doing free will work and it's still programming. Well, you know, then do you think we, we get into the matrix? Like it's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Like even if we think we're awake here, like now talking are we just following some programs in the matrix? So. Uh, it's funny. Cause like you talk about the reincarnation trap mm -hmm. to me, it's like the programming is like a mind trap for us because now it's like, we have to question everything. Mm -hmm. And it's something, you know, we, in my opinion, it's like, we never should be in a position to where it's like, I have to say, did I dream this or did I really do this? Right. Did I choose to do this or did someone choose this for me? It's like the fact that we had to live with that. It's like, you know, at what point do we get to say, I'm done. This is over from this day forth. Everything is pure me. You know, and I think, I think a lot of that is like right now, like we're starting to wake up and talk about it and be like, no, I'm, I'm done with this. You know, I'm, I'm taking my power back and you don't, you can't buy and sell me. You don't owe me. This, this is my, this is my body. This is my conscious, this is my life. And I'm going to push through and, and try to create whatever I can create for myself that I want, you know, which for me, it's just like, I just want to be happy, have fun, you know, I want to help some people. I, I'm just at a point in my life where I have some basic things I want. I definitely don't want to wake up depressed. Now, if I am abducted at night, I wake up depressed. And within an hour or two, I'm feeling better. And I'm like, I know I was abducted because I'm waking up feeling sad and depressed. An hour or two later, I'm fine. I know what happened, you know. And then there's some other things, too, that can give it away to me. And um, I think we all are just it's part of what we're waking up to with this is we're getting our power back and our control and we're saying no no more of this you know i like i like that you know like you're saying you know we're waking up and able to take it back because that that gives us hope in the programs that yeah you know we can completely break free and we're not doomed to, you know, forever be looking over our shoulder or questioning ourselves. And I'm kind of wondering, too, because 
Like they always say everything's been disclosed in front of us, but we just haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. And I wonder like I've seen a lot of like science fiction where people can sense other people that are like them. Mm-hmm. And I'm wondering, you know, is that like is the programs like that to where we can sense other programmees, whether they are aware or not aware? I, I think so. I mean, right before we got on here live, you said that um, Christy and someone else were telling you you're in the programs. I say that because I know she's been on your show and we, her and I talk about this kind of stuff. And I told you, yeah, I was thinking about that before we got on. I thought you'd been in the programs. I think we're starting to come together and recognize each other. And that's one reason that we you know, we meet each other and we go and join these groups like um, James Rink's group online, you know, um, because we recognize each other. It's like, hey, I know you from these programs. So, and I think it can help. I think it can help wake people up to it and open up their memories by seeing someone that we recognize here. I think it can help us, you know, to wake up to those memories, remember them. I, you know, I love that to be like real and be that way because to me, what a gift to be like there when, you know, sensing somebody and being like right there for their aha moment to go, okay, you've had the aha moment, but you're not alone. We're here standing with you Mm -hmm. and can help you where I've been come from and where these people before me came from. And I just, because the reason I say that is what we've been through, it's like we can't really talk with anybody about because Mm -hmm. it's like, my God, you know, if we list half the things we've done, all our friends would probably be like, You know what? For the safety of my family and those around me, I'm going to go step over here and you're going to be left in the room by yourself Mm -hmm. is my personal fear and my, you know, hope of that doesn't come true is, you know, people don't start judging us by what we did without knowing we were doing it. And then the other thing that worries me is where our clones are. And when do we get the final clone be put down so we no longer have to go, okay, where am I now? Who's Mm -hmm. using me now? Yeah, I, I try to look at it like, I mean, before I knew about this kind of stuff, I try to treat it somewhat like a shaman would treat it, where they talk about bringing back soul fragments, where I ask to, um, ask to close all that down, like um, I ask to heal the altars, heal um, any of the negative energy within the clones and, and shut it down and bring back that consciousness to myself, because it's like... To me, I feel kind of ungrounded and ungrounded and fragmented sometimes, I think, before I started to try to pull that back to me. So. Right. And I mean, one of the things, too, that is kind of benefit, but it's also kind of, I think, a setback sometimes for us is because of the program. Our emotions aren't like normal people's emotions. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, I can feel sad about something. Yes, I can feel happy or angry about something. But it doesn't get expressed the way people like. And a lot of times, it's like I feel like I have to, quote unquote, fake an emotion for people to be like, yes he really is feeling this okay we can move on and we're we're doing the healing process and i'm like i'm done with the healing process but because it didn't look the way you wanted i had to you know and so 
do you think that's going to stay with us, that we're always going to be that way? Or do you think our emotions and everything will return to, like, normal? I would think the emotions are going to return to normal, you know? I think I think it also aligns with what we were just saying, that we're, we're realizing about these programs. We're realizing we... We were in them, and that's the first step is to realize you know, so that we can essentially get ourselves out of it and get healed and get to more of a normal state of mind here. And, you know, I, I, part of me, too, wonders, can we ever go back to being normal with all the stuff that we've went through and seen? It's like, could we actually like quote unquote be like superman going to live on a farm and like farm his days out and just be like accept that and be like yes this is my life now or would there always be in the back of our minds going i want to go off world i want to go to this planet again i want to go see these races again <laughs> Yeah, I definitely feel bored here a lot, and I, I didn't know why until I started looking at other lifetimes. I thought, well, I've done a lot. Like, I'm very, very, like, a thousand, ten thousand years old or something, you know? So it's not, uh, I can get bored easily. Like, really, this is it here in this world? Um, but I think it, I think that's part of the matrix, that we're shut down. Like, our abilities are shut down, our control is shut down here. So, um, you know, it would be nice to get to a point where we're content the rest of our lives. And, um, you know, as far as looking at like, okay, well, I've done all this terrible stuff in the programs. I've had all this terrible stuff happen to me. I try to move my mind and to the state of, okay, look at it as an experience and move it to a learning experience. I'm not trying to say earth is a learning planet. I don't really believe that. I think we're trapped here. Um, but I'm, I try to move it to an experience and, and look at it like that. So it's more separate from me, whereas me is eternal and I'm a soul. And I have, you know, people could say divine energy or whatever. I've got something beyond this body right here, right now. So if I can move all that junk, that terrible super soldier secret space stuff is terrible. If I can move it over here to an experience, then I feel like I can experience myself better in a more positive light here. If I separate it, I'm like compartmentalizing it over there. You know, that's actually a good way to look at it too, because then you can still keep the benefits like, you know, healing or being able to move faster than normal and, you know, all these other gifts that were beneficial that we got as, you know, it's kind of side effects. And I think, you know, being able to pick and choose mm -hmm. might be of benefit to us and something that, you know, hopefully we get at the end. And that, uh, you know, and my, my personal want is, you know, even, you know, for myself in the end is when all is said and done and the programs are officially and truly shut down and no longer operational that we find peace and we like accept the peace and live out the rest of our days you know in that peace and not have the you know, like fighting amongst ourselves like you always see in some groups. And it's like, oh, boy, now we're going to go into round two amongst ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, why well, do that? Um, I, I like to end a lot of my energy clearing sessions on that, bringing in the peace, balance, harmony, you know, just bring stuff down. Um, yeah, because it's not fun arguing with people about stuff. I've literally had a couple people like yelling at me, arguing about things, and I didn't even know why they were mad, you know, because 
because I feel like I've been through so much, like with the programs and with my life. I've had a lot of trauma in my life from childhood where I'm not bothered by a lot of stuff here, you know, in this life. So somebody else can get mad about traffic or, or whatever or their day at work. And I'm just like, I'm just sipping my coffee. Like, mm, yeah. <laughs> so. And it's interesting, like, you know, you going into the quote therapy I went into Reiki and got my mastership to help people. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that, you know, we all have kind of picked different, you know, like maybe opposites of what they would expect from us, kind of, mm -hmm. in a way, as our calling, so to speak. But I also wonder, though, too, if it's not like you know i can't help think did we pick this or you know is this part of like say the white hats you know taking over and saying hey we can use you guys to help these and help everybody and we're still in the programs but it's a different program now mm -hmm. I actually, I actually did a, a, um, a trance, you know, a, a remote view where I was looking to see like, are we all on like a trap planet? Are we all trapped here? Were we all in the programs? And I was seeing different categories. Like some people are just here living their life and their life was okay. And we can look at them and it kind of confuses us because we're like, well, why is it my life like that? Why does it go so good? <laughs> like it goes pretty well for them throughout their life, you know? Like I was just visiting with um, some friends of mine. I've known them both for over 30 years and they've been married for like, they were staying 27 years. And I thought it's nice to be around them. Like they're super happy and they like their jobs and they have their kids are happy and everything. I was like, well, it must be nice. I'm not envious of them. I'm happy they have that. But I thought, man, I wish I had that. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. You know, I'm cool. the same way. <laughs> yeah. But is it like something, would I be happy if I had done that life and stayed in that small town my whole life? I know everybody the same, just the same thing. They're extremely happy. I don't know if I would be happy with that. I like to move around. I like to travel. I like to do different things. Um, and I think that might have to do with us being old souls. We've been around a lot. So we're like, okay, we, we want to have different experiences. And uh, those experiences may help us to, to wake up to this kind of stuff we're talking about too. So, Right. And I actually would actually take it a step further though, Angie, and say, if we did choose the life of being with, you know, having the family, living in the small town, you know, as an example, and stayed put, I, I, I don't think we could escape this. I, I think it would still show up and we, you know, still would be facing it. But I think the underlying question, though, is would be be as free to experience it as we are now mm -hmm. if we were committed to say the family nine to five job and everything and going okay so i got this plus now i got this and nobody wants to talk about this and mm -hmm. so I, you know i almost wonder if our awakenings would have been worse in those situations. Yeah. I'm yeah, they could have, they could have been, you know, I feel like my awakening is easier because I, I had already gone through so much, you know, as a child and as an adult, just going through like abuse and neglect and just all this stuff throughout my life and being robbed at gunpoint twice, like the crazy stuff, you know, as a kid, like crazy wow. stuff. So it's like, I feel like I, already gone through so much that when I started waking up to like these programs, I was like, well, okay. <laughs> you know, it's shocking, but it's like, it's just another, another chapter in my life. You know, it's not like I lived the happy marriage, like my friends, like a long term marriage and a happy little life, happy little town. And yeah. And then suddenly like, whoa, 
something out of nowhere, like, oh, you're in the programs and you're waking up uh, to all this crazy stuff. Yeah, because, I mean, we think about, you know, how hard is it for us to come to terms with. Mm -hmm. Imagine the person that's been next to you for, say, 20 years, and then you wake up one day and say, you know, honey, I've done this, this, and this. I'm starting to learn. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine that person sitting there just going, well, you know, I promised you know, we said that vow of, you know, for sickness or health or this or that. I'm like, I just don't see them being there and going, okay. It's like, no, it's like there's got to be that moment of, or I say moment, but it could be months or years or days mm -hmm. of, I don't know you anymore. <laughs> yeah, what do they do if I say, well, I know that I've had these these experiences where I've been a, an assassin because before I started waking up to like knowing that I'd been an assassin, I would watch these shows on TV about assassins and I'd think, yeah, why not? You know, <laughs> you know? like what's it, you're just doing it. If you're doing it from a distance, like, Hmm, it's kind of just a job. Right. And I thought, why do I, why can I disconnect from it? Well, I can disconnect from it because I've done it in these programs. But if I was married to my lovely spouse for 20 years and I said, you know, that doesn't really bother me watching that on TV. I think, yeah, why not? You know, because I know I've, I've done it in another lifetime. He might run out the door and be like, I'm afraid for my life, you know? Yeah, I'd be like, I think I'm married to a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And be like, Angie likes to go to the target. I like to go to the ring target practice. He's like, Am I going to be her target next? Like, what the heck, you know? And that's the thing. It's like, I can't help wondering, you know, like, with the term Manchurian candidate, you know, mm -hmm. and how they portray it. It's like, you know, are we so easily activated and deactivated that we never even know we've done it? And being, you know, and then going... If we never know we've done it, how do we know how to stop it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's part of the waking up to it. Um, because just the the visions of things I've seen, you know, I'm not there. And this, this might be a good thing to remote view and, and look at is to remote view and go into the the remote view of us in that alter state or going to try to remote view in the clone's point of view of what they're thinking and what they're feeling because um i think that's part of shutting it down is to to bring back those fragments and all those pieces so see and i wonder sometimes if like because you know if like christy and them are right that you know mine's broken I wonder if part of what's broken is I get bleed through what I, or what I call bleed through because like there are some days I'll wake up and I'll be like, I have memories of, you know, having a life where I had this, this and this. And I'm like, but that's not my real, my reality right now. That's mm -hmm. not me. Mm -hmm. And so I had to start to think now, because I used to write that off as being, oh, that's a past life or mm -hmm. alternate timeline, maybe. Mm -hmm. To now thinking, you know, is that my aspect mm -hmm. or my clone's life? And I'm um, remembering what he was feeling, not what he did, but what he was feeling mm -hmm. in that life and going, how confusing is that? Because... You know, there are times where I'll see someone, and I'll be like, I know that, and I'll have a deep feeling, and it's like, now it's like I have to go, did I really have that deep feeling, or did my aspect have that feeling, and I'm just reliving their experience? Yeah, and you might very well just be reliving their experience, because they've got part of your consciousness. They, they are a part of you, so... Yeah, which begs the ultimate question, 
I think that comes down to every relationship. Are we re held responsible for them taking us and creating lives outside and therefore have we cheated? <laughs> because, I mean, it's like, you know, it's... I know that sounds silly, you know, to think about, but in reality for us, you know, this is something true. It's like in my core value is I cannot cheat, but if there's like three aspects that are... <laughs> of me running around in a relationship with three different people, mm -hmm. I can't help but think, am I cheating? Because that's me, but it's not me. <laughs> but I don't think you are because you're not aware of it. So there's a part of you that's asleep to it because you're, it's, it's the altar. Or it's another, you know, part. Um, so, so no, I don't think you are. And then what if you do become aware, but that, that part of you is over in another body and you you if you could even have a conversation with it it, it may have a different personality and a different thought and be like well but i want to do this you know it's still going to have its may have its feeling of like well i'm still going to do this so yeah i mean it's like people just view you know or I don't know if people view us, but I, I just think of, you know, we think about, okay, we're going off fighting wars or we're mm -hmm. fighting here or there. We're doing peace treaties here or there. You know, we're off world. We're here. But we don't ever stop to think, what's the collateral of what mm -hmm. we're doing? Mm -hmm. What is happening to the people around us when we're not us? Yeah, but I think I think in the programs we're so controlled where we're just doing what we're told. Um, I think there's a point where um, we're we're kind of in a zombie state, you know. We're just doing where we're told. We're not so aware of like, well, this is wrong. I shouldn't be going out here killing whoever because they say this is the bad guy, you know. Right. Like, we're just following like a soldier, doing what we're told to do. Right, and I get that, but I'm meaning, when I say collateral damage, I'm meaning like, okay, so as cover for my aspect to assassinate who he's going to target, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to form a relationship with this person, have a mm -hmm. family, and then mm -hmm. at a certain point, boom, do it, aspect over, mm -hmm. that will that family that's left behind you know what happens mm -hmm. to them do they cease to exist as well or do they live on and just say oh i guess he just left us and it's like well he didn't just leave you he was never there but yet he was and it's like that's mm -hmm. what i mean by collateral damage is the innocence around us yeah i think they i assume they would just live out their life you know um there's a couple shows about that there was one dollhouse but it wasn't dollhouse there was one where the guy was going out being an assassin or something crazy you know in the programs but then he's going home to his family and he's like this loving you know dad and husband and it's like you know, what is that? Is it really like if he just disappears, are they going to live out their life? Or are the, is that family just uh, like non-player characters? Are they just backdrop people? So Right. Yeah. And I, I can't help wonder, too, if because, you know, my programming, if it is broken or glitched, is that the glitch to where I'm actually starting to think about the other people involved mm -hmm. and not just thinking, okay, I went in, did what I had to do, came home, mm -hmm. end of story. It's like, no, there mm -hmm. is another story. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the compassion and the empathy of it. And maybe that other part of you might be a clone or might not have very much consciousness and doesn't, you know, think about it as much, you know. Um, but and I think it is... It's showing your human side, your compassion, and your empathy. So. Uh, it's funny that you say my human side because I, 
I will quite often catch myself saying to people, I don't know how humans have survived as long as they have mm -hmm. doing what they do to each other. Mm -hmm. And it's like I realized in that moment, I pull myself out of the human equation. Like I'm just sitting here watching them do <laughs> what they're doing. And it's like forgetting, no, I'm actually a part of that story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it probably depends on the human. It's probably most humans on earth are going to be like, me, me, what about me? Um, I was watching my friends who are so happily married and just seeing them do for each other. And I thought, you know, that's the way it should be. It should be like, I'm I'm putting you over me because you're you're my spouse, you're my partner. And with our kids the same way, you know, I'm, I'm taking care of my kids above myself, you know, even when I'm exhausted or whatever. Um, but how many people really consistently do that? If we were all doing that, then we would probably be okay and we would be happy here on Earth. Yeah, that's true. And they probably would have a harder time controlling us, too, because it'd mm -hmm. be like we'd be like resisting more because we'd be like, no, I had this to lose now. No. Yeah. And, and it, it goes with separation. I mean, religion separates us. Race separates us, you know all the stuff going on in the news when there was all the, the race stuff way back. I don't want to, I don't want to trigger anything on YouTube or wherever, but it's like that stuff doesn't matter. None of that stuff matters. I think it's a, no. a means to separate us, you know? So. Yeah. And with all of that, like even like the identities and everything, I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, when it boils down to it, you can be whatever you want to be. But in the end, I'm sorry, no matter what you say you are, you're either one of two. That's, <laughs> it, that's the world we're in. It's like you can imagine yourself whatever. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is we're one of two. Mm -hmm. And we're either here or we're not here. There is none of this like, oh, you know, I, I'm gonna do this or that and it's like I, and I can't help but wonder being brought up out of dogma like I could never I was protected from the dogma of religion mm -hmm. and that's why I can separate and say yeah you can believe whatever you want but the bottom line is there's this and this yeah Where it, there are gods, there are goddesses. There are male, female. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sorry, that, that's just, there, <laughs> you can't escape that because no matter what you say you are, in the end, that is your foundation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and we need that so we can reproduce, you know? When that whole... Uh, that whole documentary was created of what is a woman. I thought I watched it. I thought, I don't care. I've given birth to a baby. I know what I am. I'm a woman. It's not going to change. <laughs> you know? right. so. and I, I, I had to say too, when I was like, when they were saying, we're going to make men be able to give birth. I was like, if we were meant to give birth, we would have started that way. That mm -hmm. is not an evolutionary game. Mm -hmm. That would be like an evolutionary sidestep that just mm -hmm. a mad scientist went nuts on. <laughs> but, oh, we've actually gone over the hour. I'm sorry. I, I kind of lost track of time. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. It's, it's, I, it, I feel like it was a really good discussion. So, it is. And it was. And if you have time, I just have one more. Like, little question about mm -hmm. you and what you do is we mentioned in the beginning and we kind of glazed over, but along with QHHT, you mentioned SRT. What, what exactly is SRT? It stands for Spiritual Response Therapy, so it's energy clearing. Um, Robert Dessler created it back in the 80s, and it actually was kind of a spinoff from hypnosis but you don't have to be hypnotized so you're tapping into your subconscious to release things that you're holding 
So it can clear things quicker than hypnosis. You can go through lifetimes and experiences quicker and, and release. Okay. It sounds crazy. I mean, I, I think the first time I went and got energy clearing done, I, I met a couple of people in a book group and I was like, oh, I left my teaching job. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I went and had an energy clearing uh, session and I thought this stuff is weird. I would have walked out if people hadn't recommended it to me, <laughs> but I walked out of there feeling so good. And the clients always say, I feel lighter or I feel happier. You know, there's always something that they feel at the end of the session. So, um, yeah, there, there is something to it. it. It's, it's a good feeling to release and you're, you're not just releasing from this lifetime from SRT's viewpoint is that we're holding about 80% of our issues here and are rooted in other lifetimes. And so then a lot of that can be rooted in these programs as well. So we want to go back to the root and, and clear and release it all out. So, Right. And since we are over the hour, where can people find you if they're listening to this and maybe the QHHT or, wait, did I put too many H's in there? There's two the H's. QHHT. SRT. <laughs> Or any of what you do is like resonating with them and going, hey, I think I could benefit from this. Where can they find you? So my uh, YouTube channel is just Angie Dollar. Um, Dollar is my real name. <laughs> I didn't make it up. Um, and um, my website is Future Life Today. So if you want to put it in the comments or something. So Future right. Life Today. Bring it in today. I'm listening to you and trying to copy it, and I thought I had it copied, and instead I accidentally opened. <laughs> so I was like, oops. So I will post it to every show, and then I will put it on screen. So give it a second. Here's the YouTube you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it threw me off at first, I'll be honest, with when I found you on Facebook, with it being Angie Dollar Healer, I actually thought that was your name. And so I was like, that is a really cool name and like quite the calling. And I was like, <laughs> and then when I saw your bio and everything, I was like, oh, this isn't actually her name. <laughs> well, the thing is, I tried to put my name on Facebook, my real name, Dollar, and Facebook acted like it was a fake name because it sounds like a fake name. So I just put Dash Healer. I didn't know what to do, you know. So, uh, yeah, my name is German. It was some German spelling, and they came over and they changed it to Dollar, just a word, you know, here in the U.S., so. That's interesting because mm -hmm. my last name is German mm -hmm. and it's like I, I actually had a German teacher in high school because I never took German hold me aside and say do you know what your name means and I'm like um no and she goes head of and I'm like head of what and she goes that's the question like <laughs> Wartzkoff is head of the blacks and so I was like, okay. And so it's like I, I went online and was like, well, what are we heads of? And apparently we were a Germanic clan that a lot of monarchies would hire out. And so it was like, oh, so we were like the head of everything. <laughs> kind oh, of. That's cool. But at the same time, it's like I sit there not thinking, is you know. Really? Or did we really, when we, like you're saying, come over to America and somebody somewhere crossed a word off and we just never noticed it? You're just like head of, oh, head of what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're the head of whatever we decide, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Uh, That's a good way to be. <laughs> yeah. But... Again, I want to take a moment. 
um, especially in this series, I like to kind of point out full disclosure moment of how much I appreciate and am grateful for you coming on the show because you and I have not met before. We've talked mm -hmm. briefly on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so I am truly grateful and appreciative that you trusted me enough to come on the show and share your story and your information with me because being a new show on the block, I, I just like to really just, you know, it hits me here that, you know, you trusted me enough to say, yes, I'll come on. And so thank you for that. Yeah, sure. I was really looking forward to it. So I feel like I'm talking to my old friend or something. So I'm sure we do know each other from somewhere. <laughs> Well, and it's funny you say that because I, I feel that too, but at the same time, I feel like watching podcasts, mm -hmm. when they're conversational, I feel like they're much easier to watch than mm -hmm. when somebody you can see has an agenda from their questions. It's like, okay, there's a fluid and then it breaks, mm -hmm. fluid breaks. And so, yeah, I do my best to kind of put everybody at ease and just make it a conversation. Yeah, I'm sure people like watching it like that, too. That's that's the kind of interviews I like. So, Well, if you like them that much, you are welcome anytime <laughs> to come yeah, back. So, so we talked about me maybe doing a, a super space, like a a space program thing for you so that would be fun to do if you that want to be. i i am actually open to it after talking with you and priscilla and christy on the side it's you mm -hmm. know I, i'm feeling more comfortable knowing mm -hmm. than being afraid of what am i going to learn because like you were saying you know if i was an assassin i'm like i really don't want to where mm -hmm. there's a body count attached to my name. <laughs> mm -hmm. But at the same time, though, there really isn't a body count to my name because it wasn't me. It yeah. was just somebody borrowed me. <laughs> right, right. So, haha, -ha, can't hold me accountable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just something over there. It's just that experience that's over there in that other compartment. So, yeah, but. Thank you so much. And it was really cool to learn that you're actually in the same state I am. Well, I'm in the process of moving back to Sedona. I, I lived in Texas since 94. I moved to Sedona, moved back to Texas. And I'm like, no, nah, I, I got to move back. What? Why did you come back to Texas in this heat? Well, my you daughter. Were free. Was, <laughs> yeah, my daughter was finishing college and I kind of missed the daughter and friends. And, and now I'm just. Like, no, uh, apparently a lot of people move to Sedona, move away, move, move back. Like, we're, we're pulled back there. So, I'm hoping that'll just be my place for the rest of my life. So, yeah, well, Sedona is an energy hub. So, it could be, you know, if you're sensitive to the energies, that you're just needing a break from the energies. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked it there. I liked Flagstaff there, too. So I think that's a little more out of the energy, but it still feels good. So we'll see where I land. It'll be somewhere around there. All right. Well, we look forward to keeping in. I say we. I'm so used to having co-hosts on my other shows that I'm like, the we comes out. And I'm like, nope, I'm flying solo. There's an I. <laughs> And so I hope to keep in touch and we will definitely have you. See, there we go again, the we. It's like I just can't help saying we. <laughs> I'll see you again. <laughs> yes, and I look forward to you coming back on the show anytime you have something or if you want to share information. And Cliff. Rockin' Flowers says, what did I just hear? Peace? I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but 
yes, I would like to leave everyone with peace and, you know, that just know there's always hope of the day being brighter every day and no matter how dark things may seem, there's always that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel, which is not the near-death experience tunnel. So don't be thinking I'm telling you that. But there is always a brighter tomorrow. So don't let the day get you down. Exactly. Wow. And I feel so therapeutic saying that. Like, <laughs> where did that come from? <laughs> But yeah, so thank you and thank you for putting up with me. <laughs> oh no, it's been great. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Yes, and thank you to everyone in the chat room. And so from me here at Riding Through the Unknown to all of you out there, have a blessed day, blessed night, blessed evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Make it a bright one. There's enough doom and gloom in the world. Let's let's be the brightness that stands above everything else who we're meant to be. So, good night everyone. Good night.